everybody, Max Kovala here for IGN. Unless you've been in a coma for the last nine years, you've probably got some intel about Metal Gear Solid V The Phantom Pain, which is stacking up to be the biggest game in the whole series, in addition to drivable vehicles, horses that poop in real time, and a sexy new redesign for the indispensable cardboard box. It seems like the latest installment might feature something new and exciting for the series, a soundtrack of licensed music. During a recent Konami preview event, the bulk of which is unfortunately embargoed until June 9th, AP's entertainment writer Derek J. Lang revealed on Twitter that he found a boombox in-game playing Kim Wilde's 1981 pop classic Kids in America. Whoa. It's not an airtight confirmation we're getting a massive track list, but let's be realistic. It would be really weird if that was the only licensed track in the whole open world game. So here's my chance to have some fun about speculating what other period appropriate songs might be included. That means 80s music. There were numerous cassette tapes scattered throughout Ground Zeroes, which could be collected and played back, so presumably it'll work the same way. In fact, Ground Zeroes did have one licensed track. It was Here's to You by Joan Baez, which seems to be a song that Kojima's quite fond of, since a cover of it also played during the credits for Metal Gear Solid 4. And there's another Joan Baez classic that would be right at home. It's a very somber song about old ghosts from the past coming back, and how maybe sometimes things should stay in the past, which seems kind of on point with the Phantom Pain's narrative. But if you want to be literal about it, Blood Diamonds also seem to play a part in the Phantom Pain, so there's that. Oh, and Judas Priest did a totally kick-ass cover of it, which would also work, because Judas Priest rules. It's no secret that Hideo Kojima is a big fan of David Bowie, and given that Big Boss's troops are called the Diamond Dogs, I would be downright surprised if Bowie's song of the same name wasn't in the Phantom Pain. But there's another track that would fit right in as well. It's Bowie's 1983 single, Cat People, which is the one about putting out the fire with gasoline that was most recently used in Tarantino's Inglorious Bastards. In Metal Gear Solid, the question was posed, do you believe love can bloom on the battlefield? Well, long before that, in 1983, Pat Benatar retroactively contradicted that question with her hit single, Love is a Battlefield. Do you believe that battlefields can bloom on the battlefield? Well, if they can, then war really has changed. Phil Collins' In the Air Tonight was released in 1981, but saw a resurge in popularity in 1984 when it was used during the climax for the pilot for Miami Vice, which became one of the most iconic shows of the 80s. While the show has a drastically different setting and aesthetic from The Phantom Pain, the tense, brooding tone in In the Air Tonight is a perfect fit for some nocturnal stealth missions. Ooh, that sounds weird. In The Phantom Pain, Big Boss seeks to do what's right. As sure as Kilimanjaro rises like Olympus above the Serengeti, he seeks to cure what's deep inside, frightened of his thing that he's become. Okay, maybe I'm getting a bit too interpretive here, but Metal Gear Solid V takes players to Africa, which is the name of Toto's 1982 chart topper. Africa. Obvious, right? If you think the Metal Gear series was the first time anyone wearing a bandana got nicknamed the boss, you have clearly forgotten about Bruce Springsteen, who topped charts in 1984 with his politically charged album Born in the USA, which tackled issues like America's post-Vietnam War national identity. The first single off the album was Dancing in the Dark, which has a chorus about being a gun for hire and starting fires, which seems pretty in line with Metal Gear's big boss. Stop me if you've heard this one. A military operative is sent into the jungle on a covert mission to assassinate an officer who's gone rogue and formed his own sovereign army. Yes, that is the premise to the original Metal Gear, but I also just described Apocalypse Now, which famously uses the Doors' apocalyptic ballad, The End. So between that and the fact that this is Kojima's last Metal Gear game, and the fact that the song has a chorus of Ride the Snake, I think this one is pretty on the nose. As the title would suggest, The Clash's album Combat Rock had some military themes amidst their usual political commentary. One song that would be fitting in the Phantom Pain is Rock the Casbah, which is easily the catchiest tune ever written about a Middle Eastern dictator calling in an airstrike on his own people. Geez, that's messed up. But you know what's not messed up? Balloons! Unless, of course, they are the weather balloons that Snake is tying to unconscious soldiers when kidnapping them with the Fulton Recovery System. Or the balloons in Nana's 99 Red Balloons that accidentally start World War III because of Cold War paranoia! Now, finally, I did a lot of digging around when compiling this list, looking at pop songs from around 1984 that explored themes that seemed relevant to the Phantom Pain, as well as stuff that seemed kind of just stylistically on point, and occasionally having a little bit of, you know, literal stuff that worked its way in there. And for a minute, I thought maybe I was stretching too much when I was looking at the lyrics for the In Excess song, Original Sin, but then I watched the music video, and if this shot of Big Boss isn't paying homage to Michael Hutchins, then it's one hell of a bizarre coincidence. Anyway, considering we've already seen trailers with songs that are way more recent than 1984, like Garbage's Not Your Kind of People and Mike Oldfield's Nuclear, there's really no telling what else is gonna be on the Phantom Pain soundtrack, but now you've got a Phantom playlist to hold you over until September. What are your song requests for DJ Kojima? Let us know in the comments, and for all your Metal Gear coverage, keep it locked on IGN. Max out.